Morning everybody, Nick here from Meat Smoke Fire for our 13th cook I think it is. A few changes today, um, so it should be a bit of fun. I posted the recipes out there, we've actually changed one of those. Uh, the last one, the raspberry almond and whatever it was, cake, uh, I noticed that it actually takes longer than this whole cook we've got to cook. So uh, um, we'll just, uh, we're, we're going to swap that out for something else. Um, yeah, have you got that? <laughs> So I can hear myself over there on the iPad, I've turned the volume up. Um, so, I'm um, going to show you what's different today. Sorry, no sexy camera girl anymore. Uh, we've got Chubby in, uh, Chris, my brother. Um, he's grown, he used to be the skinny one, but he's uh, actually grown into the Williams body. So uh, we called him Chubby before he was Chubby. Um, so morning, he's going to be on the camera. So he'll be, you know, if it's a shocker today, it's because Chubby's in charge. We've got Annie, my niece. You've heard me mention her a few times. Annie's going to be doing one of the cooks in a few minutes. So she's not done it before, so be gentle with her. Helena, as usual, on the thing. So type in and answering all your questions. We've got Rachel, my brother's wife. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> And then over there somewhere in the hammock is Tom, look, hiding away. So um, slightly different this week, few extra people, they're visiting, so um, there we go. Right, we are going to go straight into the cooks today and then we'll come back for questions and so on because uh, they're, they're quite long so we've got to get them going. So I have actually started the first one and we're going to do an onion tartatan. And so what I've made already is just, uh, this is just two tablespoons of butter two tablespoons of honey uh, and two tablespoons of mustard all mixed together just cooked up a bit to make almost um, uh, a caramel so we're going to take that and to this I have a plate of onions uh, that I've sliced up and we're going to add these in and what the and the idea here is we're going to put these in the pan and then start browning them off on the bottom so caramelizing them so we're going to fit these in as best we can little one in there um, you can leave a little bit of space around the edges because we might want to tuck some pastry in there so um, um, if you if you're wondering why I've got almost the perfect amount it's because this plate is pretty much the same size as that so uh, we'll take those off right so if you look at the recipe online um, we need to do these uh, direct so just to get some caramelization on them so in this egg here ooh, it's a bit warm will be fine um, we're going to pop them in if you have a look in there chubby we've just got uh, just charcoal uh, and I'm just going to put the pan over the top should be about 200 it's a little bit warm uh, it's about 220 at the moment so I'll just turn it down a tiny bit that pan will obviously bring the temperature down as well uh, so we're going to cook those for about eight to ten minutes until the onion starts to caramelize it will start to soften and then we'll do the next phase of that recipe perfect right so now we need to rush into this almost rush into the second recipe so this is where annie's comes in so let me go that's going to be over on the chopping board right annie this one is you yeah. do you want to come around this side right so obviously i've been hard at work making this puff pastry this morning or did you make it, Annie? I didn't make it. No, are you sure? Right, so if you want to lay that out along there, that'd be great. I'll just go and put this in the bin. Perfect. Now, we're supposed to get three rows. Do you reckon we can get three? I think we can. Or should we do it three that way, Helen? Yeah, okay. we'll go that way. So, you want to slice through the pastry in three places. There you go. Yeah, it's really sharp that knife, Annie, so just be careful with it. Beautiful. Right. You can whisk that up. So now we're just going to give it a quick egg wash before we put um, some apple on it. We're going to make, the, sorry, I should have introduced this, but we're going to make some apple puffs. Um, so a dessert, it's, it will cook slightly faster than the, than the one we advertised. So we're going to do that. Yeah, I know, got it. You see, you can't see Helena in the side. 
trying to tell me how to do it. Annie's well practiced at this, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> right, there you go. Yeah. So I, you can then paint it. Yeah, all of it. Just paint it nice and quick. Just rough. Beautiful. Looking good. <laughs> We've got Rach now teaching him how to use the camera. Is that yeah, perfect. Right, bit of an egg wash. Now, sprinkle of that. You do your fingers, mate. Right? So, just a bit of a sprinkle over there, not too heavy. So, who's hung over this morning while we're doing this? Oh, I haven't had any responses yet. Oh, we've asked already, have we? Yeah, I've just asked him. Uh, Mr. White's just joined. Morning, Paul. How are you? Uh, Mark in Hopefully. Newcastle. Mark Thomason. Nice to have you on, Mark. Ollie. Perfect. Ollie's on. Hello, Ollie. Right. So, we're going to put these down. I might put two rows on it, Nanny, like that. Yeah. In fact, start them at this end, because then they can overlap a bit. You start that one, I'll do this one. Leave about a centimetre around the edges. If we run out of apples, that would be all right. We've got more. So we're just laying the apples up. I think we've got plenty, Helen. Yeah. So we're just going to lay these apples up on here. And then we're going to get some nice, gooey, sticky. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll go and put some of that in the egg just to warm up. Um, I'm going to put some apricot jam put a lump of that, I'll pop it in the egg just to warm up, check my other tart, so it's all right. just starting to warm up so that's going to take a little while, lovely, and the middle one as well learning, yeah, right, just one more at the end I guess, yeah, I've got, I've got one here. So you do that, I'll chop another apple, so we're going to need it. Oh, Andrew Green's feeling hungover. Oh, dear it Andrew. It was his birthday yesterday, so happy birthday. Happy belated. birthday, yeah, Andrew. And his X-Band has arrived, so he's looking forward to using that. Excellent. Franco's well, feeling a bit jaded. Oh, Franco. Has got out of bed especially to watch him. Oh. Well, only just. <laughs> Franco, that's terrible. Anyone else? No. Any any questions so far? No, no questions yet. Right, Annie, carry on. Nearly there. Oh, I didn't need it after all, well, I did because I hadn't finished mine though. I think they was that too close to the end. They look good. Base duck. Come on, Annie, you haven't finished yet. Let's just walk it around. So then I just want you to just tap it. You might move some of these, but tap it on. Oh, I'm going to move them all. It's a bit, to be a bit runny, so you're going to have to be careful. Just paste yeah. it, paint them on. Uh, don't hold that because it's hot. Okay, so someone's cooking a whole duck next week. Any tips? Whole duck. Um, thing with roast duck. Uh, if you want crispy duck, then fine, leave it whole. Um, the thing with duck is, um, sorry, we haven't put the socks over the microphone today, so if it's a bit breezy, I apologise. Um, but the um, thing with duck is that the, uh, and the same with chicken, but on a duck, the breast is um, done when it, it's like 56 degrees. That's when you want to take the duck out, but the legs won't be done enough because they're a bit tougher than chicken legs. So take them off at that point and then cook them a bit further. Um, if you want to serve it whole, um, it's really difficult with a duck to get it all the right doneness. That looks great, Annie. Um, to get it the right doneness all at the same time. So okay. it's a compromise between the legs being done and the breast being overdone. Uh, so yeah, just be careful with that uh, when you're doing it. 
Um, the other way is you could always take the breasts off and cook them separately, render the fat out, you know, score them, render the fat out, the breasts in a cast iron pan, and then maybe confit the legs, uh, so cook them in duck fat at a later time. But if you want it whole, um, just be prepared that the legs won't be ready when the breasts are. Okay, um, next question. Yeah. Did, um, did you modify your convector to get it in and out of the expander? I can't get mine in and out easily at all. No, I didn't. Um, and somebody else has brought this up, so I wonder if there are some that are slightly bigger than the others. Um, um, so, yeah, the convector, trying to get your convector in and out of the expander. Uh, you, where the corners are on them, and I'm not going to pick one up because they're all hot at the moment, but where the corners are, you get one of those on a leg and then you can slide it in. Uh, it takes a bit of practice, otherwise you can go in from the top. So, um, it does work. Right. Enough. Yeah, that's perfect, Annie. Right. So now, that was just uh, soft, brown, uh, light sugar. So now we're going to put some demerara on. So, same again, across the top, Annie. Um, just because it gives a lovely crunch. Yeah, I keep going. On that one? Yeah. Yeah, several good. people saying they're struggling with that. Maybe we need to do a little video. Yeah, so what I will try and do, when the new convectors are back in stock, um, which isn't for at least another month, and I keep saying that every week, um, that I still haven't got a date as to when they'll ship. Um, uh, when they're back in stock, I will buy one for myself and um, see if they're a different, shape, uh, different size because mine all seem to slide in and out perfectly on all, all of my convect. I've got three or four in fact here, and they all fit into the, the expander basket quite happily. Right, Annie, thank you very much. We're gonna put this in, brilliant. Right, so we can take this over, follow me, Chubby. So in this egg, it's around 200 degrees, maybe a little bit more. Um, yeah, this thermometer I need to calibrate. Um, but all I've done in this one, you can have a look at that. I've got a uh, convector in there, a, a baking stone. I've got a baking tray under this because it just makes it a lot easier. I'm going to pop the whole thing on the top. And that is just about going to fit. I'll rip these edges off. Just get them out of the way and then we'll close that. And that is gonna take about 25 to 30 minutes. So Helena, in fact, set a timer for 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes of counting. Technology's working today. Don't need Paul White for his timing. Right, let's have a look at this one. How we're doing over here. Oh, look at those. So they're bubbling away nicely. They'll start to brown off, I reckon, another five or six minutes. grab a, a set of tongs and we'll have a little look at those in a bit but I can just see I'm gonna spin it round because it's definitely warmer on this side just a bit so spin it round um, but those should be lovely right so while that's doing um, so the next stage let me just pop this in the bin and wash my hands any questions Helena Are the Half Moon ceramic plates available for the expander? Yes, they are. Uh, well, they were on Friday. Um, so yes, you can get them. They look, well, when they're not so grubby, they look something like that. Um, that one's particularly dirty. Um, but if, uh, if not, I know I've got a few in my garage, but yeah, there are some available. Um, they were available on Big Green Egg. So if you ask me, I can quote you for them. Get you a little bit of a, uh, little bit of a deal um, so yeah just give, give me a shout and I can uh, quote you for those I think they're 28 pound 50 or something daft like that um, so yeah just uh, get me a quote uh, get me to quote perfect um, Helena could you run and get me a set of tongs please yeah. um, so I seem to have forgot I don't know where I put those right let's have another look can you see around, I don't know if you can get in and see that, but it's just starting to brown around the edges, just here. So just watch that. And these should all be sitting in here nicely. Yeah. So this is just mustard, mustard, uh, honey and butter. Thank you. Uh, so let's just pick one of those up. 
Um, for the purpose of this, I might, yeah, they're not browned up, up enough yet, uh, but I might take it a little bit early. Uh, oops, now I'm gonna struggle to get that back in place. Um, just for this, uh, for this video, just so you can see it all cook. Um, but yeah, these are all starting to shrink. We'll give it another couple of minutes, five minutes. So, Helena, any questions? So the question was, where do I get my cooking surface holder from? Uh, the local sawmill, uh, it's a sleeper, and we spent ages chopping the first few holes by hand with a saw and then a mitre saw to get in the thing. Uh, yeah, have a look, I'll go around to my brother's saying, have a look. So these holes up here, lovely cut, nice edges down here, and they took ages, and then we got bored. So you can see these ones a bit more ragged, that's where the chainsaw came into action. So the bottom 15 were chainsaw, the top five were by hand. Um, it does take a lot of time, um, but it, it works. So um, yeah, just cut them wide enough for the, for the surfaces. If you've got lots, it's a great place to put them. Right. Just so we can get this, I'm gonna take it off. It's a little bit early, but I am gonna take it off and we'll do the next bits of this. So. Let's get that down there. In fact, I'm going to cut the pastry, let it cook a tiny bit more longer. So while we're doing that, so more puff pastry, handmade of course. That joke's not going to last long, is it? Um, so what we want to do with this, just roll it out or open it out. Um, don't get the stuff that um, uh, is loads of butter in it it just makes everything too runny i'm just going to grab my knife so there we are cups um if you get the really buttery stuff it you'll just you'll just have goo so um yeah just stick with the normal stuff and it's actually uh, i don't think there's even any uh any butter in it anymore i think it's all palm oil so i'm just going to take this bit out of the way it's all right that's fine there for now. Um, we'll get this, turn it over, and we'll take this off. Nick, yeah. Can you remind everyone how you got to that stage, please? Got people that didn't right. So, if you missed the beginning, uh, we put in two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of honey, runny honey, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, and for about five minutes, let them boil together, whisk them up. So they form almost a caramel. Now we've put the onions on top. They've been in there about eight to 10 minutes, just starting to brown on the bottom. Uh, then I have 150 grams of Gruyere, so Swiss cheese. Don't um, try it with cheddar, it doesn't work. I've already tried. Um, so Gruyere, and we're just gonna put that over the top, sprinkle it over the top. Gruyere is delicious. And then we're gonna take this pastry disc Pop it in. Um, that plate is pretty much the size of this uh, pan. That's how I knew. And then try and just tuck the edges down. Just be careful you don't touch that caramel because it will burn. Tuck, pop it down like that. I put a little cross in the top. Otherwise it puffs right up and then it won't sit flat on the plate. So that just helps out. So that looks delicious. And then we're going to go to that egg, which is still a little bit hot. Turn it down. stainless steel on the top and we're going to pop it on and bake it now for about 25 30 minutes so that's two of them baking away let's go and have a look at our apples and see what's happening and then we'll get on to the last dish so this one i turned down too much now so it's starting to puff but only just so we're going to give that at least another 20 odd minutes right perfect so next sardines we're going to do today um we're going to do them on this egg what i probably i'm going to do uh you could do them on cast iron or you can do them on the stainless steel now with fish it will stick quite easily to whatever you put it on so the t the key with sardines is to put something under it so it doesn't stick so we're going to use lemons so i've got a whole load of lemons here and I'm 
don't drop them. Um, some beautiful sardines. Now these uh, were from uh, the Fish Society. They arrived frozen, so we've just defrosted them. Uh, fish Society do great frozen uh, fresh. They get the fish really fresh and freeze it and then deliver it to you frozen. And it arrives with a, a, a block of um, dry ice in the box. So when mine arrived, probed it, and it was still minus 50 degrees C. So the actual temperature on the thermopen stopped, you know, it would only go to minus 50 and it was colder than that. So they definitely were frozen when they arrived straight in the freezer. We defrosted them this morning. Um, so we're going to get some of these. So we've got what? About eight, nine there. So we're going to take some lemons and I'm going to slice the lemon. So we'll go over and I'll grab a knife to the chopping board. I'm going to slice the lemons. And the point of this is that these are going to be just put on the grill. They'll give it a bit of flavor, but they'll also stop the fish sticking to the bars because we'll put this these on the bars and then the fish on top just one bit at each end now you might lose some of the skin but on the whole it will, should stop it sticking so nice easy way of cooking oops some of these are rounds any other questions helena no we did on time. Got a new oh, good. Who's that? Uh, Fat Daddy's Smoke Hut. Hello, Fat Daddy's Smoke Hut. Good. And Ben. Farmer Ben. Yeah. Hi. Doing odd jobs this morning. Rain stopped combining. Oh, Ben. It's not raining here yet. Chris is just looking at his phone to find out. <laughs> what are you like? Stop showing off. Right, so with these sardines, I'm gonna put, so where I want a sardine, two bits of lemon, sardine on top. I'm gonna to keep them whole, I could cut into them if I want, um, but this will allow us to grill them. So two bits of lemon, sardine. And it should stop you sticking them to the grill too much. So very simple. Says, almost burning his fingers so we'll get these all on so this is going to be our lunch I'm almost feeling like my life is complete now I know <laughs> this particular technique Nick. <laughs> it's genius and it's these the lemons smell lovely because they burn mm. so we'll give these a couple of minutes that's a I'm just gonna beautiful do that. I'm just gonna Sight. grab, wash my hands. Here's the brain. Oh. <laughs> Is that how it works? They did say it was gonna rain and Chubby's app is absolutely spot on. I did love the little click above the head for his. Hold it out. <laughs> right now uh, with sardines i love a little bit in fact i might do it with my fingers it'd be easier a little bit smoked paprika whoops that one's got a lot on here just makes them look pretty and then we'll cook them for a couple of minutes and then we'll flip them over Right, put the lid on that, we don't want the rain going in. I am going to shut that, put my coat on, and then take questions. After I've washed my hands. Right, Helena, any questions? No, Come on, ask some questions while we're stuck in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Yeah. Go on, ask questions. This is the full, the full treatment. Yeah. Oh, everyone's got their coats on. Right. What do we need to check? Oh, it's sunny in Goddy. Just saying. <laughs> oh, so just up the road, our niece and other niece and nephew, zzz, one of the three pairs we've got. Um, sunny. Uh, it's going to so blow over. Can you leave the ceramic surfaces in the rain, or will they crack? 
Um, you can leave the ceramic surfaces in the rain. Uh, you'll see if you look around when yeah, they're all out here, there's nothing protecting them. I tend to just leave everything out. I've never cracked, well, other than plate setters, which always seem to crack from a corner across. Uh, and I don't think it's got anything to do with the rain. Um, I've never cracked anything. So um, you shouldn't, but <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't, but it can, it's fine. Helena. So the sardines are about 200, 220 degrees. So if we come over, this is proper British barbecue now. Loving it. So let's have a little look. Yeah, they're around 200 on here. I'm gonna open them up a tiny bit more. Um, while we're at it, so a lot of people ask about the rain cap that goes on here. Um, I personally don't think you ever get enough rain in this country that it really affects how much rain goes in there. Um, I have got a rain cap, so there's a little bung in here you can see. You can take that out on the regulator. Let me just dive behind here. You might be able to find it now. But if you are worried, you can pop that in there like that and the rain will just drop off the sides. Um, personally, that's my only one. I've got 10 eggs or something, so we don't tend to worry about it too much. This is great, this. Loving it. Right, let's have a look at those sardines. See if they these went on first. Oh yeah, just trying to just starting to get a nice crispy bit in the middle. And obviously you can move them up and down a bit. But the skin is all intact. Uh, the rain cap was back in stock the other day, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I sold one on Friday, I think. So, yeah, and I might put a little bit more pimenton on that side, so paprika, pimenton. This is tricky in the rain. Oh, these are going to be delicious. Now, we're going to serve these with some soggy sourdough because I've forgotten to cover it. Um, so just behind me, uh, I think the other, was it two or three weeks ago we made the sourdough on the show, on the cook, so um, not the same one obviously, but um, this, was a, this was a wholemeal sourdough that I made the other day, um, so we're going to crisp that up, I'm just going to wash my hands again. Um, they actually want to know about the sink Nick, they want a sink tour. Oh, <laughs> this is my lovely sink, it's plumbed in via a hose pipe. Um, it's only cold water, um, but you can dig a trench then and you can drop the hose pipe in so it just goes across the garden. Um, it drains out onto the garden uh, as well. So um, I did have it draining into a bucket underneath, but then I, all I do with the bucket was then go and pour it on the garden somewhere. So I figured it could just drain straight out the back onto the garden, um, save a step. So that's what we do. But there's a hose that runs all the way down the front of the house because our taps around the corner the other side. Um, so um, I'll put a link up to this. Uh, think if people are interested but it is kind of handy is the keyboard still working helena yeah. she's typing away and it's wet through i can see it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> morning susan uh susan stoneman uh in uh down in devon in exmouth um does a live cook on a sunday so on uh, one of the facebook groups uh, country wood smoke um she does a live cook uh, on the competition, so we don't talk about that. Um, but yeah, morning, Susan. Yeah, so just back from the soggy cycle. Oh, I hope you enjoyed your soggy cycle. We're having a soggy barbecue. First time we put coats on, I think, on one of these. No, we've had one other. Oh, one other. We had the oh yeah, we did. So, right. So um, let's have a look at our. What's going on? Any other questions, Helena? No, no, no. Let's have a look at our apple. Open it up, tiny bit, it's gone down a little bit. All puffing up nicely, Annie. They're going to be good. Mm. Yeah, they're getting nice around the edge. Now it's starting to, it's actually starting to catch at that edge, but we won't, I don't think, uh, we're not on the, uh, we're not on the baking tray at this edge, and we're not on the pizza stone as well. And it's also over where the leg of the, uh, the convector isn't so it's getting a bit warm on these edges so that one might be a write-off we could actually we could do is take it off and 
cook it separately. It's just too big for the pizza stone. Um, I'll sacrifice it, but that's why it's happening. Uh, it's because it's hanging over. <laughs> right, let's have a look at sardines. Don't overdo them. So you back up, Chubby. Um, for those who've joined late um, and hear me saying Chubby, this is why it's my brother. We call him Chubby. Uh, <laughs> it's not Andy this week. She's uh, 18 weeks and she's moved out. Oh. Upgrade, Nick. Yeah, uh, upgrade. upgrade. Right. <laughs> I don't think so. Nowhere near as attractive. Yeah. There you go. She'll like me for saying that, I'm sure. So I'm going to flip them again. Now, if you've got them, if you've got them in the middle, but uh, you know, cooked in the middle, then you can balance them on one bit of lemon. That will stop them sticking. And then it will cook the other ends. Look at those. All the skin intact. lush slightly warmer down this end so um, we'll move on down oh brilliant <laughs> in fact why don't we start creating a bit of space for these bits of bread to go on um, so if I move some of these down oops. What, what what would you normally serve these sardines with, Nick? So we're going to do them on just on sourdough toast, uh, and that that will be it. Just let them talk for themselves. They're going to be stunning. So a little bit of space now for those sourdoughs. So when they're done, we'll get those out. And a glass of white, I presume, Nick. Oh, of course. And given with, yeah. uh, so you excuse know. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's given that you've already started the beers this morning. Heineken Zero. <laughs> for the great British mm. barbecue, that's right. Right, Helena, any questions? Oh, how long do sardines take and how do you know when they're done? Do you check their temperature? I don't tend to check their, uh, so the question was, how long do the sardines take and how do you check they're done? Um, I basically just open them up a bit. You'll be able to see if they're cooked through to the, to the bones. Um, they're only really thin. You could check the temperature. If you wanted to do that, look for something like 63, so you could grab a thermopen check for 63 degrees fish tends to be done around 63 um, so yeah you could do it that way let's have a look I've got a okay, so oh, well, well let's finish answering that question so mid 50s so I'd like them done a bit more than that I want a bit crispy as well I want the you know to start splitting start looking good so you want the, can you see that you want the, the the, the fats in them to start bubbling, to crisp up on the outside a little bit more. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd go by look more than more than temperature on these, to be honest. Um, but the lemons will just stop them sticking, which is which is great. All right, there was another question. Uh, someone said they are big sardines. Are they filtered? What's the difference? Um, basically size. A sardine turns into a pilchard. Um, these are sardines. They're sold as sardines, but they're from they're Norwegian sardines. So uh, they're not even they're not British. Um, I bought these a, a couple of months ago. Uh, if I had bought them, uh, I, I guess uh, if I'd have bought them now, I could have got English sardines, which are a bit smaller. But they they are bigger. But they are classed as a sardine. Uh, okay. All the same family, obviously. Okay. And then someone else has said we're thinking of buying a mini max for canteen. How portable is it, and what is the surface area? Let's go and have a look. So the question was, um, thinking of buying a Minimax for camping, how portable are they? Um, and what's the surface area? So um, if we open that one up, I'll put my hand, I've got big old hands. Um, but you can see a couple of really good big stakes in there. Um, Normal size. <laughs> so yeah, reasonable. This is uh, basically it's 13 inches across. Let's get that right. It's 13 inches, yeah, across, uh, whereas the large is 18. Um, it has all the same cooking surfaces. Um, I've just got on this one, I've got the, um, the side tables that just uh, lift off. Um, we have those for classes. Uh, I've also got it on a stand, so it just unclips from those um, like that. There's a bit of ring on the back. Yeah, and then if you want to move it, it's luggable. Um, let's just say that. So this is, I can lift it on my own. 
but I wouldn't want to take it too far. It's about 30 kilos. Um, if you've got two of you, one on each side, then it's really easy. We have one in our camper van. Um, it's covered in rubbish, but we have one in our camper van and we take it everywhere when we're camping. So uh, yeah, brilliant bit of kit. I'm gonna risk it and take my coat off. Mm -hmm. What's it looking like? Looking good. Just a shower, you see, shall we? <laughs> Rollies just shot off behind us. Right, sardines. Stop messing around with your phone. Mm. What's it saying? It's gonna rain again. Well, it's gonna subside, I think, right. for the end of the show. Right. So let's have a little look at these. Gonna last flip. Oh. That burnt lemon's gonna be all over them. Right, so now I'm gonna get my sourdough in there, ready for them. Let's do that. The smell is fantastic. Yeah, let me just get a bit of towel. Uh, I'll use blue roll, it's fine. What app are you using for the weather, Chubby? What app are you for the weather, Chubby? It's called Dark Sky. <laughs> it's a paid for these consultants they know all that know it all don't they yeah dark sky get this great look <laughs> swing cedar <laughs> enough of that chubby this is cooking Sorry. not weather <laughs> so we've got our sourdough i'm just going to put a little drizzle of olive oil on it i don't know if your your fans know nick but obviously nick's got a weather station up the top there <laughs> i think you can see above the the it's tree perfect. line and the the garage. Yeah, I'll tell you I'm just, just relying on the Met Office. Yeah. <laughs> it will tell you if you go onto my website, right down at the bottom, there is a link to the weather station. So you can click on it and find out what the weather's doing here and just how wet it is. So um, anyway. So I'm just gonna get my toast in there. Let's get rid of that bit. Just about fit the three bits in. I'm going to give those a couple of minutes each. Right, let's have a little look at our tart to town. What's going on there? So, you ready? Oh, that's not far off, I'd say. Oh, that's looking lovely. Wow. This egg is actually perfect for it. Spot on. Give that another couple of minutes, I reckon. These are going to be perfect. This one might be, or Apple might just be a little bit behind. We'll see. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. That's perfect. We want it for dessert. So, right. Brilliant question. Tips for cooking a two inch thick bone in ribeye. Um, Reverse sear for me every time. Um, if Bill Gardner's on, um, look up Barbecue Bill on Twitter or, or Insta or Facebook or whatever. Um, Barbecue Bill will tell you, never do a reverse sear. He likes to do it um, the Neil Rankin method, which is uh, essentially to sear it first and then, and then slow cook it because you can take it off at just the perfect temperature. However, that requires you to have at least two eggs. So if you're gonna, the way I would do it is reverse sear, um, and we're going to do exactly that. We've got a we we bought the uh, the Hawksmore uh, uh, Hawksmore at home meat box um, because Chubby and I are massive fans of uh, Hawksmore. Uh, so we've got their meat box uh, arrived this morning. That's what we'll be having for tea. We might put some videos up on it, um, but it is a huge, great porterhouse, which is a similar sort of cut with the bone in. Um, but what I would do is uh, heat it up really slowly to, the, to about five, six degrees below where you want it. Um, so somewhere around 48 degrees for me. And then uh, take it off. And I'm doing that indirectly at 110 degrees C. So plate setter in, convector in, 110 degrees C and bring it up really slowly. So you've got to have a probe in it to, to check it. Um, or just keep coming back and prod it with your, with your thermo pen. Um, so do that and then when it's at about 48 degrees take it off um, I like it rare medium rare uh, ribeye should be done to medium rare or medium even um, uh, because of the fat content in there uh, bring it up to that 48 take it off 
get your egg, take your plate setter out, get your egg up to 250 to 300 degrees C, 250 is ideal. And then you're gonna then sear the outside of your steak to get that crust on it. Um, it will be less done nearer the bone because any uh, piece of meat with a bone in it doesn't cook as fast near the bone, um, but it will be absolutely delicious. So um, yeah, right, let's flip these bits of toast. We are almost bang on time looking good right um yeah um so uh yeah bone in ribeye uh do that reverse sear if you look on my uh website there's a picanha that is a reverse sear it's exactly the same technique uh, we're going to do it tonight with a hawksmoor uh, porterhouse uh, between us uh, and some other stuff uh, we've got the hawksmoor box which will be some fabulous. malbec yeah some nice wine in there some uh, martinis it came with some lagers uh some potatoes to do special chips so we'll be doing those um yeah we're looking forward to that so we've got that this afternoon or this evening a uh, bit of a i haven't seen my brother well since christmas so a bit of a celebration today right rage i'm going to take some plates off you and plate up uh i'll plate up these sardines on three thank you let's not burn our tart to town and we'll just want to have a yeah, the apple's fine. It's the tart to tan that is uh Sorry, Jobs. Oh no, it can go a little bit more. I'm just having a look at under the edge. It's not burning yet, so we're happy with that. Mm. Um, so that can have another five while I plate these up. Right, let's swap to a clean pair of tongs. Right. Ooh, crispy. Nice. So I'm going to leave the lemons on, but I'm going to just get the sardines across the top. All right, in three each. Put a bit of lemon on the side. Now, if you wanted, you could um, just lemon juice over the top, a little bit of uh, parsley on them, maybe a bit of green. Those. Perfect, I'll take those out of the way. They can look at each other fondly. Oop. Try not to put the lemon on because it will go quite bitter, but look at that, fabulous. Perfect, right, all that lemon, you might want to just either drop it in or take it off. Go on. <laughs> Who said that? Paul White? Yeah. Get out there. Get your egg on, Paul. Right, look at those. Right, now I need to get my white plate to clean that up. Timer is done, so I'm just going to get a bit of kitchen roll. I'm going to take this off for the purpose of the video. Um, it won't be as, I don't think it's quite as caramelized as the one the other day. I just haven't had the time, but um, we're going to do it anyway. So, uh, right. So, using, you know, as usual, using my T Fallon Genio pans. So, these are great, you know, the handles clip on and off. Um, nothing better. Now this has got quite a lot of runny stuff in it, so that will come out the edges. And get my plate over the top. I hate doing this. Where's the other glove? It's all right. Thank you. Nice and wet. I should have put my apron on. It's my least favourite thing to do. This. Good job. Oh no, absolutely spot on. Ooh, got one bit of onion. Oh, wow. Missing. So let's pop him back in. I think that looks pretty Amazing. special. <laughs> so I'm going to hold it up because that's worth holding up. 
onion tart to tan. So Gruyere cheese, a bit of mustard, a bit of butter, a bit of honey, red onions, lovely puff pastry, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever that was. Beautiful. That's going to be delish. So we'll have that over there. And then we'll have one last look at the apple. I think this might need a little bit more. See, it's getting there. Ah, oh, not far off. I actually. Happy. How do you know when it's ready? Well, it's just puffed up nicely. Um, the pastry's just puffed up. The apples are starting to soften up. I'm going to give that. Ow, that's hot. I'm going to give that another five. Um, but. You can see the idea, really, really simple. We'll do that cake uh, at another, you know, in another show, but we'll have to make it beforehand. So it's just, you'll see it come off, but they won't, I mean, there's no point mixing it all and doing that. So that's our three cooks. Um, Helena, any last questions for today? Oh, well, I'm going to, um, next week, we might do something oh. slight. Oh, he's gonna have a look at the food. Look, he's trying to be all artistic. Never got that with the old cameraman, camera lady. So uh, anyway, um, next week, um, chances are possibly I will have a rotisserie. Oh, okay. So we may do a rotisserie something. Um, I might have more than one rotisserie. So we might have more than one rotisserie something. So we're gonna give that a crack. That's a good way of, uh, a different way of cooking. I've not tried it before. Um, so I will be experimenting this week. Um, I'm expecting a, a delivery Monday or Tuesday. Um, so hopefully, I think I'm expecting a delivery Monday or Tuesday from, uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, so hopefully we will do something on a rotisserie. Um, but otherwise, yeah, if you wanna suggest away other dishes that we might do, um, we will be back next week. It might be the normal team. It might not be. You just said rotisserie is for the egg. Oh yeah, the rotisserie is for the egg. By the way, it's uh, basically uh, you get a wedge-shaped piece with a rotisserie bar that goes through it. So that um, if this is what will happen is it will sit on the bottom, and when you shut your egg, it just sits in there, and the wedge goes backwards, so that the rotisserie can then come out the sides. Um, and it's got a little motor on it, and it will spin chickens and porchetta. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do a porchetta, but you know. So, anyway, you're right. And he's tip tapping the screen and asked a question. The, oh. There's a question. Oh, okay. Come what on, temperature is the egg? Can't believe the skin didn't stick. Uh, on the on the this one. Um, and the sardines. The sardines was about 220 degrees. It's gone up a bit now. It's about 240 degrees because uh, I've taken everything out of it. Um, but the skin didn't stick because I used the lemons. Um, so if you support it, either end with the lemons, it won't stick, it will give it flavour. Great technique with any fish. Just just lift it off the bars and it won't stick. Um, so yeah. Any other questions, Helena? Uh, was it, is it a Joe Tisserie or a Big Green Egg one? Like it's it? not a Joe Tisserie and it's not a Big Green Egg one. There you go. Can't say any more than that at the moment. Um, yeah, uh, it's definitely not a Joe Tisserie. Uh, and Big Green Egg aren't going to make a rotisserie, so it is from a third party, but you'll see it hopefully next week if everything goes to plan. Tune in. Yeah. <laughs> right. Are we done? Any more questions? Perfect. So, have a quick look at the food. This is what you get when you get a cameraman like this. You get taken off all over the show. Um, that tartar tan looks spectacular, Nick. <laughs> So yeah, watch well, out, we will do rotisserie and a couple of others. If you've got suggestions on my website, go to the top left-hand side. They're, all the cooks are up there, so this one will go up there. Um, but there is a form that you can fill in and make suggestions. So fill in the form, make some suggestions, or just email me, nick at nic, no K, nick at meatsmokefire.co.uk. Uh, any questions, if you want me uh, to try and source you anything, you know, just let me know, give me a call. My number's on the website. Uh, subscribe on YouTube and I think that's it so we are going to go and enjoy our family day um, we're then going to tuck into that Hawksmoor box this evening uh, we've also got some yeah come in Annie you, you were on the cook come in um, and we are we'll put my sticky fingerprints all that no. um, so we're gonna uh, also do um, some beef ribs so I'll, I'll talk about those as well so 
Yeah, perfect. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you, Annie. And we'll get the apple pie, apple tart off in a second. Thanks for watching. Cheers.